We're back with more villain soulmates, and I can't get enough of them. You guys know how much I love villains, so I decide I'm going to show you guys some more villains. We're going to bring out the bad guys from back in 2005. We're going to talk about the Onslaught series by Toy Biz, and I hope you guys are ready for this. And when I rate these figures today, I'm going to be rating them on a scale of S to F, and I'm going to be considering things like the accuracy to the source material, the craftsmanship of the action figure, whether or not their articulation is good, and what kind of accessories are included. If you haven't seen my other ranking video, be sure you check it out. I ranked the entire supervillains line from Hasbro that included the Zemnu Build-A-Figure. If you support what I do, please click subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single video of mine when it comes out. And if you want to hang out with me and my soulmates live on Twitch, I stream Monday through Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be here a little while, guys, so you might want to get yourself some popcorn and a cool drink. Sit back and relax, and let's talk about these Marvel Legends from way back in the day, 2005. First up, Soulmates, we have Loki, and Loki is really an incredible Marvel Legend. This is a very unique action figure. Everything on him is new. Toy Biz went out of their way to make this figure. And let's talk about some of the drawbacks of the figure. His head sculpt is incredible, right? But it doesn't move around super well because of the headpiece. It gets in the way, so he doesn't turn his head quite so well, and he can't look up or down. That's a little bit of a drawback on the figure, but it does look awesome. And his articulation all over is really good. He can turn his hips, he can bend over, he can move his arms a little bit, but they are hindered by his shoulder piece, his harness up there. Also, there's a thin piece of plastic for his tunic, which works really well, and I wish that they had made a lot more of his costume out of that so he had a little bit more mobility. His ankle articulation is unfortunately really weak, but Toy Biz never mastered ankle articulation. One really cool thing about Loki is his accessory. He has a broadsword with little carvings in it that make it look really nice. It's unfortunate that it has a little bend in it, but it's not so bad that it sticks out horribly. And the other really cool thing about this sword is that he can two-hand it, which, you know, you need to do for a broadsword this size. And he looks really badass when he's two-handing it. He can also one-hand the sword if you want him to, and I like to put it in his right hand because it looks like it's kind of just hanging down at his side while he's doing a little bit of a pose and being all mad at Thor and stuff. When you look closer at Loki, you can see all kinds of detail in this cape, like all the stitches of the patchwork that are holding it together. And you can see the little fur indentations on the back too. You can also see the hemming of his cloth and his shoulder harness, and that adds a really nice touch too. There's little folds all over his costume. This really does have an amazing sculpt. I love this figure so, so much, even though it's very limited by some of the thick plastic that they used that was very obviously trying to imitate leather. But even despite the limited articulation, I'm going to give this figure an S rank. I think he really deserves it. I think Toy Biz did an amazing job on Loki, and I absolutely love this toy despite its limited articulation with the thick plastic. The Abomination, Emil Blonsky, is a very special Marvel legend. Originally, we got an Abomination action figure in the Hulk Classics line, but that figure was really tiny, he really wasn't all that well detailed, and then later on they announced the Abomination for the Bring on the Bad Guys line, and we really had no idea how big this figure was going to be. The Abomination is a massive figure. He's so big that he was testing the limits of the Marvel Legends box. Originally, the largest figure that we got was the Juggernaut, but the Abomination, he really barely fit inside that box. What an amazing figure this is. The detail on his skin is just outstanding. They included all kinds of texture all over him. This is a very unique sculpt they included for him. His articulation is pretty good. He doesn't have wrist articulation except for being able to bend his fist back and forth but he can't turn his fist which is a little disappointing honestly for a figure of this quality unfortunately the abomination can't really look up and down and turn his head all that well he can kind of sort of look down and swivel his head very slightly but he has very limited range on his head 
He also doesn't have ab articulation. He only has single jointed elbows too, which is another thing that stuck for larger Marvel Legends like this. But he does have double jointed knees and articulated toes. Surprisingly, his ankle articulation is pretty decent. They were able to get that swivel in because it was so big on his joints. <laughs> the Abomination's accuracy to the comics is very high. He does look like this in the comics. He has a little pair of trunks that he wears like a pro wrestler, and that's how the Abomination rolls. I absolutely love his head sculpt. He looks like he's about to go into a fight with the Hulk. What a perfect sculpt. Guys, I really do love this Abomination action figures, but there are some design decisions they could have implemented at the time to improve it, like on the wrist articulation and the head articulation. So because of the flaws that I was talking about, I'm going to have to give this figure an A. I still really love it, but man, they could have done some things back in 2005 to make it a little bit better. So, A rank it is for you, bud. The announcement of Green Goblin for this lineup back in 2005 really surprised me. I did not expect the Green Goblin to be in this line, but I am so glad that he is because this figure that Toy Biz turned out is outstanding. It is a perfect representation of the Green Goblin. The sculpt could not be any better. This is a perfect translation of the Green Goblin from the comics. His articulation is really good. He's got everything you expect. He doesn't have butterfly joints at the shoulders, but that's kind of okay because it would get in the way of the folds of his tunic if they put butterfly joints in there. Green Goblin's able to look completely up and down. He's got free movement in all of his joints. He does have the ball joints at the hips that were common for Toy Biz figures at the time, so that's not really a big deal. It was just the way Toy Biz did toys then. And the Goblin Glider that's included with the Green Goblin is incredibly accurate to the comics. It is perfectly depicted here. Despite how perfect this representation of the Green Goblin is, I wish there were some improvements for the figure. For instance, I wish his right hand were sculpted so the pointer finger was extended so it would look like he's doing one of his electrical blasts that the Green Goblin does. Also, I wish that the pumpkin bomb was not glued to his left hand. I wish it were loose so he'd be able to throw it. And it would also be kind of nice if they had included some razor bats with him, so maybe he could throw those. Other than that, Soulmates, I don't really have much to complain about because by the standards of 2005 Toy Biz, this figure is really, really excellent. Comic book accurate to a T, but there are some improvements like the accessories I was talking about that I wish were here. So I'm going to give this figure an A, total A rank. Just a great, great action figure, and if you don't have one, I recommend seeking it out because I really love this toy. I really do. We're about halfway through right now, and here's the rankings so far. The announcement of this figure at the time did not surprise me so much because Blackheart had increased a lot in popularity due to the Marvel vs. Capcom 2 game. So seeing him did not surprise me at all. And the figure that they turned in for him was spot on. This is exactly what Blackheart should look like. He has all the articulation you could possibly hope for. The details on his skin are grotesque and absolutely wonderful. They create a nice ambiance for the demonic nature of this figure. And despite the size of his headpiece, he has full mobility of his head. I was very surprised by that, pleasantly so. They did a really great job creating his headpiece. Oh, it just looks exactly like Blackheart should. And all of his articulation is here. He has complete and total articulation. He can move around perfectly. He can swivel at the hips. He can bend over. Like all the other figures in this line, Blackheart has ratcheted joints. So these figures hold their poses very well, and Blackheart is no exception. He has a wire in his tail, so you can bend it in a variety of poses. I don't bend it that much, though, because I know how wires go in toys. You bend them too much, they break eventually. So I try to be very gentle with it and not move it around too much. It's just the nature of having a wire inside your toy. The only thing that sticks out to me even a little bit is that the glue that attaches Blackheart's tail to his body is a little messy. But other than that, Blackheart is perfect. And I gotta give this figure an S rank. It's a total S rank. This figure is awesome and worthy of your collection for sure guys it pains me to say that 
Lady Deathstrike is the worst figure in the line. This really doesn't surprise me because Toy Biz was never really great at making women action figures. And even now, Hasbro isn't super great at making women action figures. That's one thing I wish would improve across the board. This figure of Lady Deathstrike is well articulated for sure. And her appearance to the comics though is kind of sort of there. Her face sculpt looks kind of happy for some reason and it's a little off-putting for what should be a very intense action figure. I don't like what they've done with the bands of, I guess you might call it her hair. It's not really hair. It's more of a head covering for her, but I don't like what they've done with it. It looks weird. She has ab articulation, believe it or not, and you can adjust her ab articulation, but the bands of her tunic kind of get in the way. One thing that did strike me as a little odd is that the shirt that covers her arms is articulated. You can bend the shirt a little bit and it's independent of her arms. It's kind of just tacked onto her arm like that. I do like the way that her arms are very uncanny valley. This is something I thought was missing from the Hasbro version of Lady Deathstrike. I really love the way that she has that full cybernetic arm appearance. The claws though are a little underwhelming. I wish they were a little bit bigger. This is one thing that really gets me about Lady Deathstrike action figures is that they always make the claws too small. The claws need to be just kind of enormous. And one thing I don't like about her wrist is that it has this little stop that keeps the wrist from moving back any further. And it feels very fragile. It feels like I might break it. I don't like it that well. Also her hip joints use this diagonal hip joint that's really awkward to use. Her legs don't bend straight forward like you think they should. You kind of have to bend them at an angle, then swivel them diagonally, and it doesn't work really well. They use this joint for a few figures, and it's always, always awkward to try and control. You can tell that they didn't spend a lot of time on Lady Deathstrike, and they focused most of their energy on the male action figures, and for that, I'm going to have to give this figure a straight up F. I don't like this figure at all. I hate it. I think it's poorly designed, and I just feel like it's a total fail. The last normal figure of the Onslaught series is Pyro, and he's a little underwhelming of a figure. He looks like he's reusing a pretty standard body for the time. Fortunately, he's not using hips that have to be altered diagonally. You can tell they're reusing a figure because the shoulder harness he's wearing does not bend with his ab articulation. It prevents him from bending over. His head doesn't move all that well, the swivel just goes left and right, but it doesn't look up and down, which is really surprising, really disappointing. His hands are kind of cool, they point out, which seems like kind of a thing that Pyro would do when he's firing, you know, fire at people and controlling it, because that's his mutant power. He controls fire, but he can't blast fire, so he has to have a flamethrower on his back to control fire with. In terms of comic book accuracy, this Pyro is a very accurate representation of Pyro from the X-Men comics. I don't love Pyro, I don't hate him either. For a Marvel Legends figure from 2005, he really underachieves, and I'm going to have to give him a D, because he still doesn't meet that standard of quality even for 2005. Total D tier. And of course, soulmates, we have the main event here, the figure we've all been waiting for, Onslaught in his second form, and boy... Is it a Build-A-Figure? This thing is huge, he is scary, he has an insane amount of detail on him. He even has two points of articulation on his head, which seems to be on a ball joint, but the little shell piece that's right above his head, that's his head is inside of, moves along with him. It turns side to side, much to my surprise. I didn't even know that until I was trying it out while playing around with it for this ranking video. He's got full mobility in his shoulders for the most part. He is hampered by the size of his body a little bit because he can't bend his arms down all the way. That said, he can move his arms around quite a bit, and he's even got shoulder pieces that move along with them so he can do a variety of poses. Like the other Marvel Legends figures in this line, almost all of his joints are ratcheted, so he can hold any pose you put him in very well. One of the strangest things about Onslaught to deal with is his leg joints, because he's got two of them. And getting him to stand 
is kind of unique because you can make him stand in a very tall upright position but you can also make him kneel down lower a little bit so he kind of increases in size if you can get him to stand up properly which is not that hard he's also got a very unique ankle joint that kind of swivels in two spots but also bends forward and back a little bit no foot articulation though it would be too unstable for this figure surprisingly his shell has articulation on the lower side of it which is kind of insane there really is an insane amount of articulation and detail in this figure, and I love how scary it is. I mean, it looks like it's going to eat some other Build-A-Figure for breakfast. He also has articulation on all of his fingers, all six of them, even the one that looks like a dew claw. His shell has a sort of gritty texture on it that makes it feel almost like it's an actual shell. And then he's got smoother textures over on his red parts. The work that went into this figure is kind of insane, and when you look at it up close, it really is a thing to marvel. All the paintwork, all the shading, it really is amazing. There's no detail left undone on this figure. Onslaught is an amazing Build-A-Figure Soulmates. He's the beginning of smaller Build-A-Figures for Toy Biz, and they really brought him in with a bang. The work on him is just incredible to behold in person. Really, really, really good build a figure. I have to rank him S tier, total S tier. There's no way he's not an S tier. He's mmm, 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 mmm. Oh my god. So good, so good. And with that, here's the final ranking, soulmates. Well, what do you think of this line, soulmates? Do you think these villains made up a good assortment of supervillains for a Marvel Legends line? Do you think they could have made better choices? Do you remember having any of these figures, or have you read about these characters? I don't know, soulmates. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you have your own rankings for these figures, I would love to hear what tier you would place them in. If you support what I do, please click subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single video of mine when it comes out. And if you want to hang out with me and my soulmates live on Twitch, I stream Monday through Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to play some superhero games, and I would love to see you. I'll be back again soon with another ranking video, soulmates. And until then, with love from me to you, bye bye